Liberation on Facebook for all the Liberation activities. Biba! KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adahi Itanu Program. Cars Plus reminds you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And steaks, ribs, seafood, and our famous fresh garden bar. Ruby Tuesday, good times you can taste. Tonight on Primetime, a meeting in Mingilao drew many concerned residents saying enough is enough. Plus, one man convicted of sexually abusing a young girl will spend the next three decades behind bars. And is Guam's population getting sicker? One local health insurance executive is seeing a rise in diabetes. Hafren, good evening. Residents from Mangilao and other villages came together last night to talk about safety and solutions in the wake of last week's machete attack in Mangilao. With a story is Sabrina Salas Matanani. Jerry Cruz has been living in Mingilao all his life. What is happening to this village recently is simply unacceptable. Cruz was one of dozens of people from all across the island who attended a town hall meeting at the Mingilao Community Center. The meeting was prompted as a result of last week's incident in Mingilao when several people who were driving along University Drive were attacked by machete-wielding men. Although witnesses said there were up to four to five, only two were arrested and had a criminal history. The town hall meeting is the first in more to come in different villages to allow island residents to express their concern about safety and to open dialogue to find solutions. FSM Consul General Teresa Philippin apologized to all the victims of the machete attack and assured those in attendance that the FSM government is working with the local government to find solutions. Please be assured that the FSM government and its people are not sitting idle and they're not turning deaf ears to what's happening on Guam. We are very, very concerned and we are very saddened that these things are happening. However, I personally implore on the general public that this is not the FSM. These behaviors that we're seeing, this uh, misbehaving attitude of young people, this is not the FSM people. Those of you that know the islands know that we don't normally do this in the islands, not in Yap, not in Pompeii, not in Chuk, not in Kosrai. These are actions, independent actions of a few, few young men that has gone to this extreme where people are very fearful for their lives and their safety in the communities. Young men that Cruz can't say for sure are from the FAS or Guam, yes, but more than likely were drunk and wreaking havoc in the village. Cruz says his truck, for example, has been vandalized multiple times and as recently as this past Sunday, he was a victim of a hit and run. I could tell you story after story because it's happened so many times since 2006. It's 2019. That's 13 years of reckless abandonment up there at the university area. Joe Tapaste is also a Mingilao resident. He moved back to Guam about four to five months ago. He said it takes a village to raise a child and he's willing to do his part to help. The issue is now. We have an issue here with the kids that are creating problems because they're either bored and they're using things like alcohol to pass the time, to have fun, to, or, or to uh, uh, suppress uh, all these depressions that they're, receive, they're, that they're experiencing. I'm willing to get involved and try to help and, and, and be active. I, I don't like to sit around and complain and talk. I, we're a victim because it, it's, it happens in front of our yard practically within you know, four months. Former Senator Judy Guthards, who was a victim in the machete attack, offered several solutions, such as working with the FSM government, equipping law enforcement with the resources they need, getting law on the books to prohibit vagrancy and loitering, and going after Uncle Sam for failing to do its part in enforcing the compact agreements. The federal government has not done its job from the very beginning. It's almost washed its hands of the challenges that we're facing here and in other U.S. jurisdictions. It's like a deadbeat dad when it comes to the compact agreements. And we need to hold them accountable. And we need to work with them to get them to live up to their part of this agreement. 
Also attending last night's meeting was Nadine Songeni, who is from Chuk and is a program coordinator for Humanities Guahan. From the village of Jigo, she felt compelled to attend and to speak up to put an end to stereotypes that FAS citizens are uneducated and disrespectful and provide insight into programs that she's working on. I hope to um, change your perspective in this space that it's not true. Um, we, in our individual families, we try and through many of um, people like where I'm from as well as other islands from FSM or the freely associated states that are here, I, I can see some of them. We're trying our best. Um, we call ourselves, uh, um, we want to empower um, our community members through programs that uh, help them see themselves as agents of change. At the end of the day, Philippin is hoping together we can all find solutions. We don't want to turn it into something that we, we, even us FSM citizens, law-abiding citizens walking to a store fear that somebody is going to retaliate because we're from the FSM. And likewise, we don't want to be in the community of Mangilau and fear that we cannot go out at night because we have neighbors that are from the FSM. So we have, although it's, it has gotten to a very bad situation, we have to be mindful too that we are all members in a community and we need to to help each other coexist. Aside from the FSM Consul General sitting on the panel before stakeholders, also attending, taking notes and listening to concerns were the president of the FSM Association, former Senator Carlotta Leon Guerrero from the Governor's Office, Senators Pito Terlahi and James Moylan, and the president of the Chukis Association of Guam. More town hall meetings are scheduled to be held in other villages. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matt Tanani. Johnny Lujan Uggen will spend the next 30 years serving time at the Department of Corrections for sexually abusing a young girl over the span of one decade. Uggen was convicted in February on rape charges after he was arrested in April of last year. The victim was 14 years old at the time, but Uggen began molesting her when she was five or six. Prosecuting attorney Christine Tenorio says the hero in this case is the victim who was courageous enough to come forward and testify against her perpetrator. And because of her strength, he will not victimize anyone again. The alleged sexual assault occurred in March, but the alleged rapist was only arrested by police this week after the victim spotted him at the Guam Memorial Hospital. The victim alleges that she had recently met Salvador Napoti Delphin Jr. when he picked her up in Anigua, took her to a cliff area in Asen, and raped her. Delphin allegedly punched the woman during the incident, who eventually managed to break free and run for help. According to court documents, he admitted to having sex with her, but claims it was consensual. He also admitted to punching her, but then later stated, I knew that she didn't want to have sex. Local bankers say they'd welcome the potential business from a marijuana industry, but first need to make sure federal laws will allow it. Bank Pacific President Phil Flores says the Guam Bankers Association is closely monitoring the latest regulatory moves and believes it's just a matter of time before the federal restrictions are lifted. We want to make clear that Guam Bankers Association, we're not advocating the use of marijuana any more than we're going to go tell you to go get a martini. But we do do business with the liquor industry and we want to do business with the cannabis industry. We can't right now until federal law changes. But baby steps are baby steps. There's a bill going through Congress right now uh, that would try to help, but it's not enough. He says they've been in touch with the American Bankers Association, which will keep them up to date on any moves by the feds. Flores says the marijuana industry appears to be flourishing nationally, but the lack of access to banking facilities could be harmful. People are hoarding great amount of cash, great amounts of cash. Some, uh, some of the uh, companies are leasing out uh, old bank buildings that have vaults in them. Uh, or, or they got a lot of Rottweilers and electronic security around. But it's very, very dangerous to have to have that much cash. Flora says money laundering could be another concern associated with the marijuana industry. But potential violators would likely draw the greatest scrutiny and heaviest fines from federal regulators. A pro-life rally set for Friday, this in reaction to the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration's efforts to recruit a doctor to perform abortions on Guam. This flyer making the rounds for the prayer rally, an open invitation to senators and the anti-abortion community of Guam. A statement from the governor's office about the prayer rally says, We respect, appreciate and welcome the public's ability to voice their concerns and exercise their rights. The flyer further reads, say no to recruiting doctors who kill our unborn children and say yes to recruiting doctors who help us save lives. 
Governor's spokeswoman Janela Carrera said there is no word right now on whether the governor or lieutenant governor will attend. Another complaint has been filed in federal court against deceased Capuchin priest and Boy Scouts master Father Louis Briard. Court documents identify the victim as 55-year-old D.N. to protect his identity. He alleges that when he was 10 to 12 years old, he was sexually molested by Father Bruyard at the Barragata Church grounds and during Boy Scout outings. D.N. is requesting a trial by jury and up to $5 million in damages. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained. Whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Welcome back. Guam's population is getting sicker with an alarming rise in diabetes patients in particular. And the potential is growing for a death spiral for the local health industry. Those were some of the grim issues raised by a local health insurance executive in his assessment of local trends. In a wide-ranging presentation for the Rotary Club, Calvo Select Care Administrator Frank Campilla warns about the need to address the alarming rise in diabetes, one of the most common diseases here. That also correlates with what's happening with the wall and the United States. You know, a lot of that goes to, because of the sedentarism and because kids are not being as active today. So we see diabetes being diagnosed at an early age and the incidents increasing dramatically because of sedentary lives. He also sounds the alarm bell for what he describes as a potential death spiral for the health industry. It starts with ever increasing prices for health care that leaves too many consumers who can no longer afford insurance and those who are left in the pool are much higher risk. Because they are higher risk, then they consume more health care resources and the prices continue to go up to offset that utilization. And as you increase prices, less people get insured. And it's a cycle that at the end, basically, uh, it won't matter how much you increase your prices, the cost or the utilization for a health insurance company will be more than what you actually can charge. Campillo blames in particular the high cost of medicine. And he believes the best way to reverse the trend is if patients pay attention to the actual costs of their health care and insist on the most cost efficient care. We need to bring back consumers into the equation. We need to get consumers to ask more questions, to start uh, uh, asking, why do I have to take this drug? Can I take a drug that is less expensive? Uh, and start getting consumers more and more involved. He says the higher medical inflation will only translate into increased medical premiums. Guess who's moving to Hagatnya? Former Governor Carl Guterres is just about ready to take over his new office. Guterres, the governor's chief advisor on economic, national and international affairs, will be occupying the space across the hall from former Congresswoman Madeleine Bordalio's old office at the Capitol Plaza in Hagania. As we reported, a bid was put out in April and Governor spokeswoman Janela Carrera confirms Guterres will make the move along with two Gita staffers, Jeff Marcheseau and Patrick Sherman, who are detailed to him. KUAM News was there as final touches were being put on the space by workers. Guterres tells us he has a budget of $250,000, but that his $3,600 monthly rent would come out of the governor's office budget. 
A confirmation hearing was held today for Guam Regional Transit Authority Board nominee Evelyn Duenas. As we reported an outburst Duenas had at a 2017 GTR, GRTA meeting caught on tape and making the rounds to island media, part of the only testimony against Duenas. Bureau of Women's Affairs head Jane Flores and GRTA director Selba Bata speaking in favor of her nomination. Duenas outlined her plans and concerns for the agency in testimony before Transportation Chair Senator Jose Pito Turlahi. Turlahi said, Turlahi said he appreciated her input, but in his closing remarks, the senator asked Duenas to use civility in her workings with the department. Promise me that you will use that respect, and I'll tell the other uh, board members to work together. I do give you my word that when I get on board, I will... Um, of course, work with everyone and try to just get transit to where it needs to be. Transit board nominee Evelyn Duenas. Discussions began developing and began on developing a $1.2 million multi-purpose athletic facility at Tizan High. This morning, GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez, along with the department's Capital Improvement Projects Division Manager Randy Romero, Tizen High Principal Sofia Duenas, and Vice Principal Joel Punzalan met with the Committee on Education for an informational hearing on the budget and timeline. Fernandez says the facility will include a track and field for football and soccer with bleachers and lights. He says one of the missing pieces is identifying property within the greater Tizen campus and has been an issue that has not been addressed in the last few years. The prior administration wanted to do it, but we were unable to complete any, you know, uh, bring it to reality. So we did reiterate our request to the Governor Leon Guerrero and said, can you please help us take, or help take the lead and see if we can make something, get something done for Tizen High School. The superintendent says he asked the governor to look at the bigger picture and explore a broader use for the central campus and ways to improve community benefits. The property includes the GDOE headquarters, Tizen High, and two charter schools. I think we're at the right time to have those discussions with the landowners, the other interests, uh, other government agencies to, say, to figure out, hey, you know, now that we have these educational uses there, what can we do to encourage the right types of development, you know, going forward? Fernandez confirmed that the central campus is on a long-term lease-to-own contract with Cortec International. He says the contract's expiration date is around the year 2040 with an annual cost of $10 million. And we do have some big news from the digital front as we've made accessing Guam's best source for news, entertainment, and information on the web even easier to navigate. It's tonight's Your Take with Jason. Hey guys, Jason here. We have a big day at KUM Digital because we have redesigned our entire web experience for both the desktop and the mobile browser. If you go to us, on your desktop or laptop computer, you'll see our new homepage. There's lots and lots of space. That means reading will be easier. We've changed the fonts. There's a lot more photography that is highly emphasized. You can still get to our YouTube channel, get to all of the news stories that you know and love, and interact with us, add your comments, and we want to hear how you feel about the various stories. You can still find local sports. You can find all the weather information that you need updated um, on an hourly basis. And when you read the stories themselves, Everything comes through, looks really, really cool. It also pops. Also, if, as I said, if you're on mobile devices, regardless of your orientation, our site is going to load very, very quickly. It loads really cool, regardless if you're using like a small phone, if you're using an iPad, if you're using an Android tablet. Everything works really, really well. We put a lot of work into this because we heard um, the concerns that you guys have. The site loads a lot faster right now, takes up a lot less memory, and we hope you enjoy it. KUM.com. Go check it out right now. Thanks, Jays. Uh, stay tuned. Sports is next with Dave Delgado. Agent Alpha. What's that? An Alpha insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our Alpha insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is, target acquired. Agent Alpha. Yes! 
When it comes to power and performance, nothing compares to Dodge. And right now at Cars Plus and Mighty, you can save thousands on many Dodge vehicles in stock during our Dodge Performance Days. Like a new 2019 Grand Caravan SE, save $42.50 or save $61.50 on a new Durango SXT. Looking for more power? Take home a new Charger SXT Plus today for only $37,689 or save over seven grand on a new Challenger GT. Get more power and performance at Cars Plus and Mighty during Dodge Performance Days. Cars Plus, driven by you. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports, brought to you by Triple J. Tonight on the show, we take a look at the summer youth basketball camp going down at the Tamuning Gym. Camp leaders include Guam Women's National Basketball Team members Callie Beneventini and Destiny Castro. Check it out. Kids ages 6 to 14 years old have been putting in gym time and sharpening up their basketball skills at the Tamuning Gym. The 2019 Summer Youth Basketball Camp is held weekly from 9 in the morning to 12 in the afternoon. Camp coordinator Elsa Ujoa is joined by Chaminade University basketball players Destiny Castro and Cali Beneventi, who will also be suiting up for Team Guam at this year's Pacific Games in Apia, Samoa. Coming back, I always want to come here and help because um, the kids, they need someone to look up to. And since I have that platform, might as well. Having this really made me like love the game more. Um, if I didn't have this, I wouldn't be where I am today. The cost of the camp is $85 per child per week and includes learning the fundamentals, rules of the game, team building, and fun. I've been coming to this camp since 2015. And uh, I like about this camp because we do fun stuffs, and we do dribbling, these types of slides, and we shoot. I like uh, I like the coaches because they have uh, good attitudes. Coach Kelly, she's really good at playing basketball. Even Coach also. Uh, I really like my teammates too because they're always uh, cheering me up, even though we're losing or winning. Parents interested in signing up their kid can check out Guam Basketball at Yahoo.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at www.guambasketball.com. Callie grew up attending the summer youth basketball camp and playing basketball for the Tamuning Typhoons. She enjoys her time home with family and helping give back to the youth as a camp leader. A lot of these kids, some of them never even played basketball before, so you really have to, you can't just do straight basketball. You have to let them have fun with it, do drills, um, just teach them fundamentals, basically. Some of those drills include agility and physical conditioning, offensive and defensive positioning, footwork, and game time situations. For Charo Bork, coming to the camp is something he looks forward to every summer. He's been participating in the summer activity since he was five years old. Here we do um, road runners, the shooting mid-range and three-point. After that, we practice our layups, right hand, left, and um, we dribble, right, left. We do the crossovers behind the bat, between the legs and all those stuff. Tennis Academy of Guam will be hosting a free one-day tennis clinic on Saturday from 4 to 5.30 in the afternoon, June 15th at the Sheraton Resort and Spa Tennis Courts. TAG will also be running their annual tennis summer camp from June 17th through August 9th at the Sheraton Resort and Spa Tennis Courts. Camp will run Monday through Friday from 2 to 5 p.m. and is open to kids 7 to 16 years old of any skill level. Weekly sessions are $100 per child per week. Please bring a refillable water container, towel, sunblock, hat, and athletic shoes. To register, please go to TennisAcademyGuam.com or for any questions or concerns, contact Coach Josh at 483-8524.
Get Dad the perfect gift now. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus for as low as $38.50 per month when you join the Now program. Come in before Father's Day and receive a free JBL speaker and Galaxy earbuds. That's over $150 worth of free gifts on us. Happy Father's Day from Docomo Pacific. Better together. Some conditions apply. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive. And it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. Ingredients come from local farms and create local jobs for farmers like us. For every job we see in tourism, there are hundreds more we don't see. From teachers to babysitters to engineers, we, we all, all work, work in, in the tourism industry. industry. Our visitor industry benefits everyone. It improves our income and gives back to our community. We need more opportunities for a better Guam. Tourism works for Guam. Check out Triple J's spectacular deals going on now during the hot summer savings event. Zero down and no payments for 90 days. Get into a Kia Sportage or Mazda CX-5 at only $21,995 or $168 per paycheck. The big boy truck, the Ford F-150 starting at $229 per paycheck. Or the Honda Civic starting at only $166 per paycheck. Triple J says yes. Purchase your next vehicle online at TripleJGuam.com today. Triple J, customers first. And before we close out our the news tonight, to our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Riley Jade, Sablan Al Forky, happy third birthday to our boss baby, daddy's baby, Riley Jade. We love you, sweetheart. Love, daddy, mommy, and bo boy Evan Joe Fidel. Rosa Camacho Mendiola Atalic, birthday shout out to this beautiful 97 year old amazing woman in our lives. God bless you, Mom, Grandma, Great Grandma, and Great Great Grandma. Brandon Joshua, happy belated 28th birthday. From Brave Ray, Jerry and Jace, Liam Larry, and Bailey. And remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KOM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo and your name and birthday. And that'll do it for us here on the news desk, but uh, stay tuned. Breeze next with In the Mix. Closed captioning.